and welcome again to Chair Interval Training, brought to you by Community Access Yellow Springs and the Yellow Springs Senior Center, and me, Lynn Hardman, a certified flex instructor for silver sneakers and more, but you don't need silver sneakers and you don't need a Senior Center membership to participate in this safe chair-based exercise program. I still would love for you to join this, the uh, Senior Center here in Yale Springs, but more on that at the end of the program. For now, all you'll need is a sturdy chair, a great attitude, a couple of things you might have lying around the house, and consult your physician before you begin this or any exercise program. And it's recommended if you feel dizzy at any time or out of balance to remain or return to your chair. You can move there and get plenty of benefits. The goal of this exercise program is to make our movements easier. So if anything hurts, trust your body, don't do it. You can always reduce the range of motion, modify, adapt, but fight, fight, fight. <laughs> and I hope you had a great Independence Day. It was a little different, but um, this exercise program is also designed to help you remain independent, aging with grace in place. All right. So let's get started. I don't need my mask because I'm alone in this room, but we love for when you come to Yellow Springs to see you in your mask. You might use a rubber band or tubing and a jug or a hand weight that's anywhere between two and say 10 pounds, depending on your strength. You can always put it down. And once you've done your best, then take a rest. All right. You can remain in your chair the whole time, but I'm going to begin standing and then I'll do an interval seated and then an interval standing and then seated and you get the idea. <laughs> All right. It's always best to check safety first. Make sure the area around your sturdy chair is free and clear of anything you may slip, trip, or fall on. Always remain close enough to your chair. Ooh, we're having a light problem here. Remain close enough to your chair that you can touch it as your balance check. And also, it's best to be able to see it, keep it in your peripheral vision, and then you'll, you won't trip up on your assistive device. Wherever you are, seated or standing, best posture makes our movements easier. When we lengthen our spine, as if this small string is pulling the crown of our head up, 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 perhaps like a marionette puppet. Some of you out there know what I'm talking about. <laughs> then it makes it easier for our spine to move, not impinge or pinch our nerves. And it makes it easier for our lungs to breathe, to deliver that life-giving oxygen. So, march it out. Breathe, best posture. Inhale, see how you feel. I'll be asking you frequently, as I always do, on a scale of one to 10 to rank your perceived exertion. Or basically, be able to talk and say how you're feeling. One would be the lowest intensity ever while moving, and 10 would be the highest. At 10, you wouldn't even be able to utter a few words without great difficulty, so that's not desirable. One means you're ready to go, but you may not be doing much, so you can work a little harder. How hard is up to you? Okay. While we're moving, I want to preview a couple patterns we're going to use today. They're both familiar, but with a little tiny bit of a curve ball. I'm going to get a little closer so you can see my feet. But I want you to stay back by your chair. We do an out, out, in, in pattern very often. Stepping out to the right, stepping out to the left, stepping in. Do you like my pink shoes? <laughs> So, just try that at this slowish pace. Bending your knees, ankles, and hips into a little mini squat, if you would. Now we're going to take it forward a little bit, forward, 
and then back a little bit, as if we are touching with our feet all points of the letter X. So it's our out, out, in, in pattern, but it's going in an X. We've done it once before. But you might not have caught it, so I'm going to preview it. Let's try it at tempo. Out, out, in, in, back, back, together, together, forward, forward. So if you imagine the dots on the top of a die, like a pair of dice, the number five has five dots, and you're basically stepping on all five dots. Later on, if you like, you can work on agility and do it faster. But it's up to you. So just march it out, please. I'm going to get back to my chair. So that's one of the patterns we use for agility. Research shows if you're agile, you can move your feet fast that you're at a reduced risk of falls, which means you'll probably have a better chance of living independently longer, stronger. That's why I'm here. I don't want it just for you. I want it for me too. <laughs> okay, this one's called lift, two, three, march, two, three, lift your knee three times and march. Lift your other knee. We've done this one before also. So think tall, like that marionette string pulling up out of your, the crown of your head, lengthening your spine. We could do it in place, and we know we've got our chair as our balance check. We could, if we are positioned properly, we could move it forward just a little bit on that march. March, two, three, lift, two, three, march, two, three, lift. So a little bit forward, but not so far that you can't touch your chair. And a little bit back. So you can always tap your toe down as your balance check, or touch your chair. We can move it forward and back. We can move it from side to side. Let's try that. So we'll be moving left. And we'll be lifting. Let's lift our heels. So let's start here. Lift that right heel. Three, two, one. March, two, three, three, two, one. March, two, three, two, one. You can do a little bit of a sideways Line. Now I want you to stay behind your chair, but I'm going to move in front so you can see what I'm doing. Lift, two, three. I kind of changed that up on you, but this is how it should look. It's a good thing I'm previewing it. <laughs> So we can all get on the same page. So you're behind your chair, but I came in front so you can see what I was doing. Good, we got our circulation going now. Let's do one more each side. <laughs> I missed a couple cues there. That's okay. We don't have to be perfect with our exercise. We do want to strive for regularity though. And we do want to avoid anything that hurts. We're going to transition to the chair, and the best way to do that is get your legs close to it so you don't miss your seat. Get your head up and get your hips back, hinging as best you can at the hips, knees, and ankles. You might want to come up and down a couple times, and then eventually get settled. When you're seated is the best time to get a sip of water. Here's to moving better together. Okay, we're going to continue to move in our chair, do some dynamic stretches and a little bit of building patterns. Speaking of patterns, let's practice that X march again, just for a little bit here in the chair. 
Out to the right. Out to the left. Sit tall, step on the middle of the X, and then the bottom of the X, or those other dots on the cube, the dive cube. A little faster. Out, out, in, in, back, back. How about to tempo? Out, out, sitting tall, moving your arms. We can coordinate our arms up and down with our X. See that? See if you can do that. Good. And let's just leave our feet out wide, sitting near the edge of our seat. Knees pointing the same direction as our toes. Get a little inner thigh stretch. Hinging forward just a bit and rolling our shoulder forward gives a good stretch over the back of that shoulder blade and the back of the hip. Let's try the other side. And we're just easing the knees open. I apologize for that light. The ballast is in problem. Hopefully that's not giving you a problem at home. Sitting tall, stretch out your right leg. Sit tall, inhale up. Unless it hurts your shoulder, you can soothe it by shortening. And bring your face a little closer to the screen. Lift your toes and fingers and say hello. Hello. How do you do? Kind of waving back and forth at the ankle and the wrist. Good. Now, sit tall, pull the navel in, draw the knee towards the chest, and draw circles with your ankle. And then the other way. If you want, if you're comfortable, you could do it with that right hand as well. Good. Let's sit tall and stretch out the left leg. Support your weight as you lengthen your spine on the left and with your abdominals. Bracing for breathing. Lift the toes and the fingers. Ooh, I can feel that. Good. And push the sole of the foot down. And sit tall. Wait a minute, we didn't get the wave in there. We better wave. Ankle flexibility and strength is really key to our balance. So it's very good to have both flexibility, the ability to move through the ankle and the wrist, as well as strength, the ability to resist movement when you don't want it to go too far. All right, let's take a deep breath. And on a scale of one to 10 right now, at the end of our warm-up, how are you feeling? Probably not high on the intensity scale, but wherever you are now, remember our target zone is a 4 to about a 7 or perhaps an 8. And while we're moving, we're trying to strengthen our heart and our lungs. And whenever we do that, we get a lot of great exercise for our brain. Essentially, patterns help our brain cognitively, helping us strengthen and make new neuromuscular junctions. Whoa! <laughs> but also, just gets good fresh oxygen to our brain. That's important. All right, let's start with that X factor. You can do it in your chair. It's our out, out, and in march. But I'm going to be standing, so if you know you can stand or you want to stand, come on over to the left side of your chair, please. Make sure your area is free and clear of anything that will get you slip, trip, or fall on. Make sure you can touch your chair. Best posture, take your left foot out front. Right foot, then back to the center. Good, now back to the back. This is the bottom of the letter X. Now step on the middle. Good, slow one more time. This is the top of the letter X. This is the middle. Good, you can always have your hand on your chair, bottom of the X. 
Are you ready to go just a little bit faster? Out, out, in, in. Now down to the bottom. Good, now up to the top. One more time through that letter X. Good, let's try the tempo. Out, out, back, back. So it's like a V step and then an inverted V step. If you're more of a numbers kind of a person, think of the five dots on the top of a, of a die cube, or a cube of dice. Yeah. Okay, how are you feeling? If you want to, if you're feeling like you are ready, when we get to the top of our X, let's try it faster. Here we go. Pumping those arms, moving those feet, staying low in our athletic position. This is definitely aerobic and definitely working on agility. If you need to, you can look down. And do your best. How about one more? That was two. <laughs> Just march out and breathe. How are you doing on our one to 10 perceived exertion scale? I'm getting up there, so. We can do this interval training on the other side, it starts slow, we're still going to get that good aerobic activity. So position yourself, check your area. Remember, you can always return to your chair, but make sure you didn't touch it. Step it out to the right, slow, left, slow. Back to the center of that imaginary letter X, and down to the bottom. Good, a little bit faster. Up at the top, in our low, slightly athletic position, or our mini squat. You ready to go to tempo? Out, out, in, in, down. Up, down. If you like, you can add those arms. Bringing them back to your heart each time. Good. I hope it's good. If it's not good, tone it down. Do whatever you need to. We're adding the arms just as a coordination factor, but whenever you raise your arms over your head, it does add to the cardio output load. So if you're feeling like a four, it might bump you up to a six to add those arms. Or another way to make it more um, intense, obviously, would be to increase our rate of speed. You ready? Bring the arms in, out, out, in, in, down, down, up, up, down, down. Stay lower if you want more. That's posture though. Head and chest up. Breathing. We're pumping those arms. Whoops, I lost my pattern. I found it again. <laughs> This is challenging for me. I hope it's just right for you, but a little challenging. How many more do you want to do? Two, one, Woo! All right, that's hot. Let's take a little break, but keep moving. Active recovery. While we're doing some active recovery, let's do some balance training. You know when we are walking behind our chair, I've been calling this our um, personal balance beam or our own imaginary tightrope. But you gotta be able to touch the chair as you step. Heel the to toe. Heel the to toe. Heel the to toe until you can't touch your chair anymore. Then stop and balance. Stretch up from the crown of your head. Good, now go back. Make sure you can touch your chair or a wall. Good, once you can't go any further, hyperextend or lift that leg behind you and open your spine up. Want to do it one more time, forward and back? That's posture. 
Balance. Remember, an added challenge is looking around the room and going backward. And balance. Woo, that was hard. I feel like I need a little stretch in my calves. If you would like that, go ahead and get that before we transition back down to our chair. Okay, see you on the ground. Leaning forward. And then the other. I remember when we started these um, community access cable TV exercise videos, it was freezing down here in this basement. And now, it's not so much. <laughs> anyway, let's see what we've got coming up next. Excellent, we're right on time. Let's get a sip of water. And remember, anytime you get anything down low, please take your time to step to the side of the race with your abdominals and lean to the side, also supporting with your opposite arm. It really helps protect the lower back. Good old water. Now, you'll need your hand weight or in this case, I've got a jug. It's a little more than half full. This gallon jug has a lid on tight for safety, has a comfortable handle, and uh, if it's full, it's a little above eight pounds, just a little. So mine's about two thirds full, almost. So you can fill yours up whatever you want. You can use a, a smaller, like a quart size jug and fill that up. That would be four pounds. But whatever you've got, you might be you have hand weights. You can use two hand weights if they're thin enough and put one down or both down when you fatigue. Because that's the goal of our strength training now. We're going to double checking this, this lid. We're going to rack that hand weight near the right shoulder in the right hand. We're going to turn sideways. Okay. Last, we're actually just at a diagonal. Last week we did a one arm row kind of on a diagonal. Today we're going to do a chop on a diagonal. So this will be one half of the letter X. Brace with your abdominals and your hand here and push it up as if you're putting it on the first of three shelves. If that didn't hurt, put it on the second shelf. If everything's feeling good, put it all the way on the top shelf. And pull your navel in and rotate. This is a great shoulder, tricep, upper part of the chest. And if we're rotating, abdominal exercise. Now, as it starts to get pretty hard, because this overhead press is hard, you can assist with the other hand. That's good. But do your best. And for those of you who are really well balanced, you know you've got this and you want to add a whole body lunge, there you go. How many more do you feel like doing? Maybe two more? One last one. Whether you're seated or standing, that's a great total body exercise. Woo! We're going to get the other side. But first, let's switch the, that jump to our left arm. We're going to work the right side of the obliques, the lateral stabilizing muscles, the quadratus of the forearm too. Go ahead and reach down on the left side. Sit tall. Be a little wide so you don't tip out of your chair. Right at the edge of your chair. You can put your right hand on your waist and feel how those muscles contract. Pull the navel in. Don't lean into this imaginary curtain. Now lean to the left as far as you can. 
and then sit tall. Okay, so you can feel what's going on on the right side of your body. We're going to add on to this that the, the, the jog or the hand weight is our resistance. If you want, you can do like a suitcase lift. Keep the hand close to the body and then lower. We're working the bicep now. A little bit of the rear deltoid if you point your elbow back. And of course the obliques. I'm just tapping that jug down, but depending on your limb lengths and your torso length and your muscular strength, you might be doing shorter or a larger range of motion. But do your best. Okay, I'm feeling like I'm almost done, but I'm going to finish off by planting that elbow right on my body and doing a few bicep curls. You can if you like. That was three. I'm going to go for eight. No, I'm not. We already did a bunch of stuff with our bicep. Let's switch hands and do the oblique exercise on this side. Don't worry. We'll get that other side. Chop. Set yourself up for success. Pull the navel in. Pull the crown of the head up. Left hand on the waist. Tilt as far as you comfortably can to the right. Feel those muscles working? Breathe each time. Now if you wanted to add on, you could do that suitcase lift. Keep the hand somewhat close to the body. Thinking of the elbow back. Like you're lifting luggage. Someday I'll get to make the trips that got postponed because of the coronavirus. And when it's time for me to travel, I'm going to be so ready. <laughs> All right, let's finish off with those bicep curls. Sitting tall, plant your right arm on your body and do a little bit of a curl. You can open your legs up or you bring them together to avoid whacking your leg with your and wait. And how about four more? Or whatever your favorite feels like your almost done number is. Oof, that was a lot of work. I felt that. All right, we're going to finish off with that last shoulder press diagonal, um, slightly rotated chop. It's called a chop. Kind of turn your body sideways. Those of you who want to do this, the lunge, that's a big movement. So make sure you've got your right hip well on that chair. Remember, you can um, use one arm or both with this. You can also do it without your weight. Okay, let's give this a try. Best posture, use your right hand to support the weight or on your leg. And let's reach for that first of three shots. Breathe each time. Second, if it feels good. If everything's feeling good, go for the top shelf and add a little rotation. So we're going from our left hip pocket up here. We're pulling that navel in. Remember, you can do both arms. If your grip is hurting or your shoulder doesn't feel like you can do it anymore, and you can also add that lunge. Only if you feel really well balanced and nothing's hurting throughout the entire body. How about two more? This is a big exercise. All right, let's put this jug down and get that other container and have a sip of water. How did you feel? When we use that exertion scale of one to 10, it's, we're shooting for a four to seven. When we're doing our aerobic patterns, like agility and balance and coordination, 
but for our muscular strength, I want you to think more like an eight or a nine, but pain free, okay? And that will get you better results, so long as you can challenge yourself without any sharp, sudden shooting pain. By the end of July, maybe you can fill your jug up higher and that will be evidence that you can do more. Alright, we're going to transition to our feet again. This time we're going to do that lift, two, three, march, two, three pattern. So you can try it here in your chair, but those of you who know you're going to be standing, please come out and perhaps set up over here on the right side of your chair. Wherever you're at, use your best posture. So, good. If you're seated, you've got to be near the edge of your seat. And then just lift your right knee three times. March two, three, and lift your left knee three times and march. Up, 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 down, 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 up, 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 down, down, down. Now, how are you feeling? I am going to transition to my feet, but I wanted to prove to myself that I can do this in the chair. You can too. But I noticed the tops of the thighs, quadriceps, hip flexors get tired. And you might have to do some creative moving, like pulling your heels back. March, march, march. Or sticking your heels out. You can do it in the air, or you can chop your heels down. You can even do a little cowgirl cross or cowboy cross. Keep on going. March, two, three, left, two, three, march, two, three, right, 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 good. All right, make sure that you're close enough to your chair and you don't take such big steps that you can't see or touch it, but let's add a little forward backward movement if you want. Four. I messed that up, didn't I? Lift. Two, three, back. Two, three, lift. Two, three. I think my brain went on holiday. I enjoy the local uh, fireworks. From my neighborhood, I was able to see the lovely show that Dave Chappelle put on for the community. Thank you for that. I didn't get it together in time to buy a ticket, but I still enjoyed it. Thank you. <laughs> and the full moon, too. Okay. You can always put your toe down as I just needed to do. And you can also grab your chair if you need a balance check, but just keep moving and breathing at your own pace. Lift, two, three, march, two, three, lift, two, three, good. All right. Let's put a little twist on this, up and over. Up and over, in place. Up and over. If you like, that looks a little bit more of the side muscles, muscles of the hip. I lost it. Let's take a break. <laughs> March it out, would you please? How are you feeling on a scale of one to ten? Can you laugh out loud at that wonderful move I just made? <laughs> If so, you're probably in our target zone. <laughs> okay, let's try the pattern again, see if I can get better this time. Remember, you can return or remain in your chair and keep moving. But make sure you've got a clear path behind your chair, because we're going to move out laterally. Let's start with this left heel lift, hamstring curl, and march to the left, and then right to three, over to the right, left, two, three. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm kind of moving out to the side a little further. Good. You can row with one arm and keep one arm 
next to the chair. Lift your crown of your head. Remember that image of a, of a marionette. Lift. Two, three, down. Two, three, up. Two, three. If your balance is rock steady, you can take it to both arms. Row, row, row. Good. How are you feeling? I wish I could hear your voice. Hey, you know what we can do instead of these hamstring curls? Or whatever you're doing right now. We could, if we've got a good safe space, we could lengthen it out to hip abduction. Hold the navel in. Your tallest version of your spine, whether you're seated or standing, is going to help you do your best moving and feel better doing it. Wow, when it's hot, like it is here today, it really makes your perceived exertion go up higher. So, you know, pay attention. Let's try one more each side with this hip abduction, and boy, I am feeling that. So let's take a little break, march it out. Stretch it out if you care to. Sort of straight, but not locked in the knee. And then the other hip. All right, well, we haven't spent some time over here on the left side. Should we give it a try? Let's do that. Set yourself up for success. Best posture. Able to touch the chair, nothing under your feet. Lift, two, three, left, two, three, down, two, three, lift, two, three, good. How about we lengthen out the leg, kick, kick, kick. You can do a little flicky kick from the knee, or you can do a long-legged kick. Try it, see how it feels to flick it. Or lengthen it out. How are you doing with that? Head tall, spine elongated. I think I'm gonna go back to the flicky kicks. <laughs> kick, 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 march, two, three, kick, kick, kick. How are you doing? Can you talk? How about on our scale of one to 10, where are you now? Let's move it forward a little bit, but not too far. And back a little bit and kick back. Two, three, one, two, three, kick forward. Two, three, and back, kick back. Two, three. Just working different muscles, working our mind. Kick back, two, three. After we do this one more time, each direction, we're gonna mix it up. And when we kick forward, it'll be forward, back, forward, back, forward. Now, back, forward, back. Forward, back, forward. I feel like I'm doing the Charleston. Back, forward, Back, how are you feeling? You can always tap back, heel or toe down. Tap, 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 right? Or grab your chair. But keep your posture good. Uh-oh, I lost the pattern. I'm having a little bit of a problem today, but at least I'm in my happy place, exercising with you. <laughs> okay. I think it's time to transition to our chair. We've done about eight minutes of that, I think. So, we're gonna do a set of squats. You could do one sitting down really slow, and that would be a really great exercise, or you could do 10. Do your best. Keep your head up. If you wanted, you could grab your jug. 
And you could do, get your tailbone back, head up. Your kettlebell swings. Don't swing too much. Use your muscular force. Pushing your hips forward. Pushing your hip, knees back. Driving your heels to the ground. This is an excellent all body strength and aerobic exercise. We're working the fronts of the shoulders. The whole posterior chain. And I'm ready to sit down. How about you? Support your spine. Take your time. Please have a little bit of water or your favorite rehydrating drink. Dilute lemon juice or any kind of fruit juice is okay. It does have a lot of added carbohydrates. Um, good clean water is great. By the way, carbohydrates are not bad. They're the most important nutrition that your brain needs. But we want to get them in the complex, whole, natural form rather than simple sugars. It's better for a body. All right, let's see. We're going to do our exercises, strength again. Today you can use your tubing or perhaps you have a rubber band. Many of these rubber products are made right here in the state of Ohio. Up near Akron, there's a big, couple of big companies. Maybe someday when it's safe, I'll go and visit. I'd like to see where they make these little things because I use them every day. All right, we're going to set up to do a series of three exercises. I think. Let me look at my cheat sheet. Oh, yes. We'll do an upper body, then a lower body, and then the middle of our body exercise. So let's set up first. Hips near the edge of your chair. Tubing or band under your feet. And what we're going to do here is a seated row. You could bring the handles inside of your knees and pull, but notice it kind of rubs against your legs. And, but that's okay if it feels all right to you. I prefer, and it puts a little more resistance on and takes the band away from rubbing on your legs so much, to crisscross them. Again, the letter X. Sit tall, put your shoulders in your back pockets, keep your hands near your body. As you pull, elbows describing the tops of the letter X. Or a little sit there bounce. Inhale. Exhale. Now, if you have really good upper back strength, because this is an upper back strengther, move your feet away from your body and try it again. If that's still too easy for you, a couple of modifications or ways that you can progress this. You can lean back and increase the distance and resistance between your ankles and your hands. Or you can simply grab that tubing further down. But remember, the goal of the exercise, any strength exercise, is to feel like by the time we get between 30 and 60 seconds, we feel a little shaky, a little dull, achy, burning in the target muscles, in this case the rear shoulders, and perhaps the biceps, upper back. I'm going to do one more and relax. Now we're all set up to do a hip exercise, but make sure your heels are right under your knees. You could put more tension resistance on the tube by stretching it. Wherever you have your hands, rest your shoulders in your back pockets. Rest the weight of your hands on your lap. You could be here, sitting tall, here or pull a lot on there, but don't let the knees knock. We're going to do hip abduction with our, not our X, just a little step to the side, and then in. Side, in, two, three. Step it out as far as you can while maintaining the knee aligned over the ankle and keeping the body straight and long and strong. 
Keep the sole of the foot sliding just over the, the surface of the floor. We're working on hip abduction, or side of the hip. I'm sure you can feel it now. You can stop when you need to, or do two more, and then we're going to do the other side. Now, pull the navel in and step out left. Good. Exhale. Resist the tubing from pulling you back. Or as I would call it sometimes, the boing, boing factor. <laughs> Resist the boing factor. So out. Three. Good. Breathe each time. How about two more this side? Excellent. Now let's do it. Out, out, in, and switch your lead to the left, to the right. Switch your lead to the right. Just trying to make it to momentary muscular fatigue and remembering to breathe. And sit tall. I'm going to do one more to the right. You could stop or you can continue. And one more to the left. Okay, last exercise. Walk your feet way ahead of your knees, but keep your heels and toes down so that band doesn't slip off. Bring your band to the middle of your feet. We're going to do an abdominal slide. Pull the navel in. Tuck your tailbone under. Pull in like you're zipping up your tightest outfit. And then lean back. I almost feel like I'm riding on, uh, I would never do this in real life, but holding on, you know, you've seen uh, bull riders bucking, riding a bucking bronco or, or a bull. And at a certain point, if you wanted to progress this abdominal strengthener, you could Put your hand up in the air, and it makes the resistance a lot more. Let's try four more with this hand. I'm going back all the way to my shoulder blades, You're just tapping, and then maybe you can try the other arm. Ooh, you have to have really strong abdominals to be a fucking bronco or bull rider. I don't suggest it, however, because the risks far outweigh the benefits. Unless, of course, you're a professional and you're getting paid a whole lot of money, but it's still really, really dangerous. Yeah, okay, let's hang that uh, strap up and I'm gonna, uh, encourage you to get a sip of water while I check our time frame here. Oh, good! All right. Have a sip of water, please. Okay. I like to end whenever we have time with another balance exercise. This one's super low intensity, so it's helping us to cool down, but it's highly relevant to our balance. So if you're able to stand up, we're gonna be behind our chair, and we're gonna play that game where we take our vision out of the balance equation. I like to call it a game. So you're gonna situate yourself Behind your chair, make sure nothing's under your feet that will help, that might cause you to slip, trip, or fall. We're going to pretend we're on a tightrope again, and we have three, count them, one, two, three safety nets. We are going to be able to open our eyes whenever we need to, and whenever our eyes are open, our balance is so much better because our vision is very dominant in the balance equation. The other thing you can do if you keep your hands super close to your chair is grab your chair at any time. And the third about our safety net will be stepping out into our athletic position. A lower, wider base is a safer, more balanced base, and it's also a good strength exercise. So 
Let's start. You're behind your chair, but I'm going to sneak over here to the right so you can see my feet. Okay? See my pink shoes? Best posture. Just standing in your neutral stance. Hands a millimeter or less away from your chair. And we're just standing, eyes wide open, balancing, breathing. Let's try coming up to the tiptoes, as high as you can get. Good. Keep your hands a millimeter or less away from your chair. Come on up to your toes, strengthening our calves. Now, if you feel well balanced, knowing you've got three safety nets, come up to your tiptoes with your eyes closed. Ooh, got your chair. You can come down to your heels, step out into your triple flexion. If you want to progress that, walk your feet smack down together or narrower stance. A narrower face is not a stable, so we're challenging our balance. From here, again, you come up to your tippy toes, strengthening your calves. Close your eyes if you wish. That's hard. Got your chair, you can open your eyes or come down and step out. Are you with me? This time, take a, a heel to toes tandem stance. This is hard, so you might want to go back to the last thing that challenged you adequately. But here's a progression. Make sure your posture is good and you've got your hand that close to the chair. Balancing here is already hard with eyes open. So keep your hand as close as you can to the chair. Come up to your tippy toes with your eyes open and if you wish, close them. You can always open them. You can always step out. Let's try it with the other heel in front of the, of, of the toe. Remember, you can go back to the, new, the narrow or the neutral stance and do this again. If that better suits your abilities today, some days I'm better than others. I wish I could save those up. So balancing here, hand is how far away from the chair? Close enough to grab it in a millisecond. We have to put toes, strengthening the whole lower body, closing your eyes if you wish. Woo Opening when you need. Stepping out when you want. That was a lot of calf work. So let's stretch them out. Best way for you to do it at home is to find a sturdy wall. Keep your knees straight. Press your heel to the ground. And hold that wall up. But relax. Lean forward. Heel stays connected. If you want, you can bend the knee a wee bit. Kind of sit back into that hip. And then try the other leg. Walking back gradually, if anything hurts, reduce the range of motion or skip it. Heels pasted on the ground, leaning forward, hold that wall up. Knee is straight, and then if you like, you can shift your weight into that hind quarter and bend the knee a little. Oh, those are good. Time to sit and stretch. Time for one more slow sit down, which strengthens our hips, our thighs, and our ability to live longer, stronger, perhaps. There's no guarantees, but when you do your squats, which are for your butt and your thighs, Research shows that squatting, the ability to walk and squat, are highly correlated with better quality of independent living and activities of daily living. So that's why we practice that a lot. All right, I need one more sip of water. sideways stretch. A lot of our stretches we repeat, but I try to mix them up a little bit and show different things. But from here, with your
your left hip off of the edge of the seat. It's very helpful to hinge forward and support your spine as you ease that leg out. Some of you find you might take it back or take it in front first and get it back there. Wherever you are, just let the weight of that leg drift down. Fill your beautiful big lungs with oxygen from the bottom to the top. As you lengthen your spine, whether your arms overhead or not, you're getting a great stretch on the front of the hip. Whether you can gently, slightly arch and open your spine with comfort or not, you're getting a great stretch on the quadriceps, hip flexor, and leaning towards the chair back, stretches through that left side of your body. for your shoulder blades. Give yourself a pat on the back and a nice stretch on the triceps. Good. Sit tall and stay here with a very gentle, uh, slight movement. We're going to rotate towards your chair back as we exhale. Breathe and fill your belly with air and you'll feel the stretch develop across the obliques. And you can kind of look over your trailing shoulder. And unwind. Let's do the other side. Take your time with that. Get supporting on that front thigh as you one back, relaxing the foot and letting the weight of that right leg drift down. We'll open up the front of the hip, inhaling, filling your lungs from the bottom to the top, opening your spine if it's comfortable. When you're ready to exhale, you can lean toward the chair back. And maybe hinge at the elbow, pat yourself on the back, stretching here on the triceps. Oof, I got sweaty in here today. Sweat's not really a great indicator of whether or not we're at the right intensity level. Your perceived exertion and your talk test is, however. Sometimes we just sweat a lot for cooling off the body. Let's come to the edge of the seat. Do a little chest and spine opener, being mindful of our breath. See if you can breathe in through your nose as you open your hands like a butterfly. Inhaling, stretching through the forearms and the biceps and the fronts and the shoulders and the chest. And then exhale, allowing the hands to come together, interlace, and, and invert as you tuck your tailbone under. Let's inhale again. And open the chest and shoulders and find a comfortable place to latch on to your chair or the seat. Again, some of the sports have reopened, 
So my forearms have been kind of tight. So you can do this very gently, just without any force, opening your fingers and extending your wrist. But you could add a tiny bit of resistance. But you want to be careful when you do any stretch where you're pushing not to hyperextend your joints or overextend your muscles. Self-care is so important. This is my happy place because my body is my happy place. I can't do the best and, and the happiest things that I like to do if I don't give myself good self-care regularly. So our physical exercise is really important for our self-care, but so is great relaxation and great mental health. And I just want to encourage all of you I'm going to come back to my seat and do three cleansing breaths, but that's not enough. I just want to encourage all of you to continue to do some regular breathing exercises, continue to stay strong, stay safe, stay tuned to this station, and um, you know, reach out, stay connected. There are so many resources in our wonderful village of Yellow Springs for you. You can check the Yellow Springs News. You can call the non-emergency Yellow Springs Police Department and you can talk to Flo Randolph and she's got her own number. Sorry, I can't remember it. Uh, and you can talk to your pastors. Many of our churches here in town now have ways to stay connected virtually and on the telephone. And um, There are mental health resources for you uh, because it's been a long patch, hasn't it? And and our bodies and minds are so connected. So I'm gonna sit back, take three cleansing breaths, and I want you to do the same, but maybe again later on. <laughs> relax. Breathe in through your nose, relax. Bring your attention to your heart or your lungs or your, your soul your passion, your purpose, and just know that it is strengthened. Your heart is strengthened. Your lungs are strengthened. Your soul is strengthened. Your purpose and passion are strengthened when you take good self-care every day. And three breaths isn't enough, but I went over my time. And hey, whatever your passion is, whatever your purpose is, if you take good care of yourself, you'll be able to do it that much better and stronger and longer. So keep it safe and simple. Bye for now.